direction really matters. All right, so how about this one? Man hits a 50 gram golf ball such that it that leaves the tee uh, at an angle of 40 degrees with the horizontal and it strikes the ground at the same elevation, elevation a distance of 20 meters away. So it, it goes here, right, and it, it strikes the ground about the same height that it started from. Now, for the impulse momentum, we only use that for the collision, right? We only use that like immediately before and immediately after the collision. So, so right here, we can do conservation of momentum, right? Immediately before, immediately after the collision. Then from here, we, we, we kind of pick up where it left off from here to here. Uh, let, this is just, let's just do projectile. This is just a projectile. Does that make sense? We're kind of combining topics here, but that's okay. That when we see a collision, do conservation of energy, but that's just immediately before and immediately after the collision. And then where that, the final velocity for my momentum, now is gonna be the initial velocity for my projectile will have to come. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's look at this momentum. Sometimes I like to label these, but with momentum, it's really, there's really no movement. I mean, it's, it's like I'm going from A to B, but we're still at the same spot. It's, it's just immediately before, immediately after. And then in a little while, I'll go from B to C. All right, so I'm going to go from A to B. I'm going to use conservation of momentum, MV initial plus FT. Actually, well, I mean, I, I could equals MV final. I probably, sh I think it would have made more sense to, to organize my thoughts this way since I'm asking for the impulse. But this one will, will work. And it doesn't really matter because this initial velocity <coughs> or the velocity at A this is velocity of B, of that golf ball. So the only thing that I know that has mass, it didn't tell me anything about the mass of the golf club. So I'm just looking at the golf ball. The conservation of momentum for golf ball. All right, anyway, before the collision, there was no velocity. Before the collision, there was no velocity. So to get the impulse, which I'm just going to label as FT, to get the impulse, I just need to take the mass, 0.05. Let me, you know, let's stick with our usual units, kilograms. Uh, 0.05 times velocity of B. The, what is the velocity right after the collision? They didn't tell me. I don't have that information yet, but do you think we could find it by looking at the projectile half of the problem. So let me pause right here. Let me jump to the projectile half of the problem. You see that this is kind of the roadmap we're going to take from the projectile part of the problem. I can get the initial velocity and then I can bring that back here. So let me pause, come over. So let me go from B to C as a projectile. B to C as a projectile. X, Y, S, F, S, I, V, I, T plus one half a t squared s f equals s i plus v i t plus one half a t squared. So in the x direction, I'm starting at zero. I'm ending, I think it told me that I go a distance of 20 meters away. Uh, so this v initial would be uh, that velocity at b uh, cosine 40 t and no acceleration. So do you see that my V initial for the second half of the problem is, is like my B, V final for the momentum half of the problem. That has two unknowns. So let me jump over here. It starts and ends at the same height. So I think we could call that zero starting and ending at a zero Y height, VB sine 40 T one half A T squared 
All right, so you can't forget everything we did earlier. So you gotta remember um, projectiles. Uh, I've got something like VB 26.1 over T. Plug that in right there and solve for T. I've got T 1.85. Come back over here or, or maybe right there. And I've got VB 14.115 meters per second. 14.115 meters per second. So that, now I'm going to go back to my uh, momentum. The initial velocity for the projectile is the final velocity for the momentum. This has direction, though. Uh, 0.05 times 14.115. Uh, I could do this a number of ways, but let me just say it's at 40 degrees. It's at 40 degrees. I can break that up into cosine 40 and sine 40. Um, but I think I'm just going to get the magnitude. So the magnitude of the impulse, 14.115 uh, times 0 0.05 would be 0 0.706. The units, we could kind of think about units from over here. Newton times seconds. We could think about units over here, kilogram meters per second i would take either of them you, you could put kilogram meters per second or newton seconds I don't, I don't think there's any you know made up units like a joule or a watt or, or something uh i think we'll just leave those as newton seconds but this is at maybe make a note here this is at 40 degrees I can break it up into the X component and the Y component. But direction matters. That force, that force and that impulse has a direction. All right, well, let's step back and look at what we did. We saw a collision between a golf club and a golf ball. So my first instinct is let's do conservation of momentum. But I didn't have enough to find the moment, the, the impulse. I needed to know the velocity right after the collision. How can I get velocity right after the collision? Think to myself, it gave me a lot of information about that projectile part of the problem. Let me use that to find the velocity that it starts, the projectile, which is the velocity right after the collision. Okay, let's go to the next one.